Okay, let's talk about some of the formatting I want you to use for your AP Chemistry Lab reports. There's some specific things and tasks that I want you to be able to do in Microsoft Word uh, that you may not have done in the past, or maybe you have. You may already know how to do these things, in which case it should be fairly easy for you. You may be thinking, why are we talking about uh, formatting in Microsoft Word in AP Chemistry class? Well. There are two reasons. Number one, it's about first impressions. Uh, when somebody looks at your document and is formatted nicely and you know it's things look very nice and you have a nice uh, layout and format going on, it, it creates a very good first impression of your work and whether they anybody would admit it or not, it's actually very positive. They, they think positively about your work and it creates a nice first impression. On the other hand, if you're Formatting is kind of sloppy, uh, things are hard to follow, um, you didn't really set up headings or do a good job with the way that you laid your document out, it creates kind of a negative first impression. Also, this is a tool that you can use in this class and other classes to add a professional look to the work. Uh, also, number two, your AP Chem lab reports. In some cases, uh, students need to print these out uh, for their application process for universities. So if you have a nice professional lab report then it's going to give you a better shot. The person that's looking at this lab report, if it's formatted well, laid out nicely, very professional looking, it's going to give them a favorable, favorable opinion of you as a student and maybe possibly help you with your admission process. So I think those are two good reasons why we're going to do this. First thing that I want to introduce to you is the addition of a title page. This is pretty easy. Uh, you can go into your document at the top and go insert, cover page. I said title page, but really it's called a cover page. And you have a selection here that you can choose from. You can scroll down, you can see the various ones. Uh, I don't really care totally which one you pick. I would like you to choose something that has an abstract on the title page. For example, this one has an abstract. You can see there's a place here where you can write in kind of a quick summary of your document and the lab that you're doing. Um, you can use this as your abstract. You don't have to write an additional abstract in the document itself. So let's go ahead and type in the title here. And in my particular case, I don't really have a document subtitle, so I can just delete it out. It's already put my name in, and in this case, I am the only author. Uh, however, if you are working in a group and you have multiple authors, you need to put uh, all the authors on in this section. You also need to put out what each of the authors contributed to the work. Oops, can't even spell it right what each of the authors uh, contributed to the work. Now in this particular case, if you were the only author, you don't have to put everything. I just wrote that there as an example. But if you, if there are multiple author, authors, you need to kind of specify what each of the authors did in the lab. The reason for that is I would like to keep track of who's doing what work. Um, I want to make sure that, for example, if one person is always doing the Kim sketch drawings, that that gets rotated around and everyone learns how to do ChemSketch, uh, that one person is not just always doing the same thing every time. Okay, so that was pretty simple and straightforward. Easy to put a nice cover page on your document. Now I want to talk to you about using headers and just basically formatting that portion of your document. Now I don't need to re... I can delete my title here since I already have one on my cover page. So you could do this by hand. You could go through and you could pick out all of your headers and you could just format them a certain way. But I'm gonna show you the better way to do it and there's lots of advantages to doing it this way. For example, just highlight, this is, this is a heading, so I wanna call this heading one. Now heading one, heading two doesn't mean that, you know, this is heading one, this is heading two. It means it's kind of like an outline. Uh, the ones that Big sections would be heading one, smaller sections within the big sections would be heading two. So I'm going to do a heading one there. 
heading one there. This would be heading two. And you can actually change, like for example, if you don't like something about this heading, you can actually specify. You can go up here, right click, uh, click modify, and you can actually change some of the characteristics, the color, the font size, and all that stuff about your headings. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go down and actually do a few different ones of these. Okay, that would be a heading two. I'm not going to do the entire document, but I am going to do enough that you can kind of get an idea of how this works. And you can see, you can see, you can get out to heading three. I don't have any thing in here that I think that would qualify as a heading three. If you want to undo one of these headings, you're like, oh, you put this and oh, made a mistake. It's not a heading. You can just re-highlight it and click to normal and it'll go back and not be a heading anymore. Okay, here I'm to another heading one. And here's just some random, I just had some random text for something else that I put in here so I could show you how this works. Now this is pretty quick. Once you do this, it's done, and you're like, well, why did I go through all that hassle? I'm going to show you a couple of the advantages. One thing that may or may not be an advantage, but it's kind of a neat feature anyway, is anytime you have a heading, you have this little tab over here to the left. You can click it and you can uh, kind of collapse and expand different sections of your document. Uh, that may or may not be something that's handy, but it's, it's a neat trick anyway. Uh, another example of an advantage would be if you go to the view at the top, go to your navigation pane and click it, you'll notice that everything that you classified as a heading one or heading two shows up in your, in your pane, and you can just basically hop around in your document by clicking over here on the navigation pane. Now, if it's a one-page document, well, that doesn't really make a lot of difference, but if you have an eight or 10-page document, it can really make a difference in the ease of which you can maneuver around in your document. Also, if you want to add a table of contents, let's go ahead and make a spot. Let me find. Oh, here we go. References, table of contents. You can drop down and do one of these automatic tables is the easiest. And you'll notice that it, go, it, it goes ahead and basically populates your table of contents with everything that you included as a heading and a, or heading one and heading two. So it makes that making a table of contents very easy. So you can see that with just a few simple tricks, you can very quickly really start to polish up your document and make it look a lot more professional. Also, once you have these headings set, you can go to your design tab, and you'll notice you have lots of styles. Uh, we have the, the everything set to this first style here, but you can pick, and you can change your style, and you'll notice that it, it automatically changes everything that you have set as various headings. So you can just play around. Um, let's see, if I want to do there's one that's a little bit different. If you want one that's really different, you can go to this one and you can see it's quite a bit different. And so you can play around with different styles and just very quickly change the look of your document without having to go back through and find all of your headings and, and re, uh, re, sort, re 
set those up with different formats, reformat those. That's the words I was looking for. Okay, so you can see kind of some of the advantages to that. There's a couple of other things that I want you to be able to do. I want you to be able to set up page numbers. So we'll go to insert. Over here you can see page numbers and you can choose whether you want it top of page, bottom page. I like them, tend to like them in the bottom page on the right. Uh, but that's kind of just a matter of preference and you can see it automatically just numbers your pages. Also a nice feature. Also, now that we're looking at formatting this document, let's look at this formula here. This formula here is not really formatted correctly. Some people already do this, but I want to make sure that you know how to do this. It really adds more of a professional look to your document. If you have a formula, if you are supposed to have subscripts, uh, please make those as subscripts. You can do that by highlighting and then going up to the top here and you can see it says subscript and then if you need it to be a superscript which I don't but I'm going to show you for example you can just hit superscript of course I'm going to change that to a subscript because that's what it should be shortcut way to do that you can highlight it hit control equal uh, I like to do that I think it's a little faster and smoother than having to go to the top every time and then for superscript you can hit Control shift equal. Of course, I don't really want that to be superscript. I just did it for an example, so I'll hit control equal and make it a subscript. So you should do this this with any of your formulas that you have written out uh, just to make sure they look professional. If you have charges on polyatomic ions, you should make those superscripts. You should, it just adds a level of professionalism. It shows that you actually took the time. Yeah, that one should be a subscript. I won't go through and do all these because uh, you just don't really need me to do that. Okay, one final thing that I want to show you is how to uh, add pictures to your document and kind of format those and get those set up so they look nice. So first of all, I'm going to go to Insert, Pictures. You probably know how to do this already. And I'm going to go find one that I want in particular. Okay, so let's take this picture and first thing I need to do is probably resize it. It's probably a little bit large. And then you'll notice it takes up a whole big chunk of space within my document and you wind up with a lot of blank space. And there, one way to fix that is you can either go up to the top to wrap text or you can also do it here on the side. Layout options, you can wrap text square. This allows you to just kind of pick up the drawing and move it wherever you want it and the text just kind of wraps around it. You want it to have a little bit of a neater look. It also looks nice to have the justify setting on. You can see it makes a nice kind of square line around your paragraph. It makes it look very professional. Something I would like for you to do is with any of your drawings, you should always put a caption. And the easiest way to do that is insert text box, simple text box. And if you don't want the line around it, which I, I don't like personally, and then you can just click no line. Okay. So I'm going to center that up. Put it, I might make that a little smaller. You can play with it, get it 
however you think it looks best. I'm not going to play with it a whole lot because I'm not here to make the video long. I just want to show you some of the features. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, if we had, uh, I won't take the time to play with it a whole lot longer, but you kind of get the idea of how to start setting up uh, your Word documents, your lab reports, to have a real professional look to them. Of course, as usual, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to come talk to me and I'll help you uh, with what I can. And there's certainly a lot more things you can do with Microsoft Word, but we're not going to really go deep into that. I just wanted to give you a few tools and skills that you can use.